First of all, our hearts and minds go out to the families affected by the COVID-19. But with that said, we will ask you to leave your emotions behind and be open-minded for this one. You will learn what is the virus, how it affects us, and tips on staying safe. During the video, you will also get some key insights on trading opportunities during these volatile times. After all, we are traders and major global events always come with buying or selling opportunities. We have followed the financial and economic data for a long time. All this talk about the financial crisis, unemployment, the trade war. We keep hearing that everything is bad, but the data doesn't show it. What the data does show is that we are in a peak of everything. Peak of economy, peak of technology, peak of life quality for people. So the highest point of civilization, where we have the most of everything we've ever had, but the one thing we can't buy or manufacture is our health. And we believe that the next global crisis that will affect all the countries on this planet will start with a chain of events that have nothing to do with finance or economics. And we believe the first of these events is starting now in China. Unfortunately, the peak of civilization comes with the dark side the peak of natural disasters, the peak of overpopulation, the peak of pollution and global warming. What has happened multiple times in history at the peak of humankind is a correctional event, and all the data points to coronavirus potentially being another one of these events. Let's first understand why we must have an open mind. Where does the virus originate? Where do we get data from? Well, China, right? As we know full well, China is a censored state. You know the scene from the Chernobyl HBO series where all the leaders get together and discuss what to do and the official says We seal off the city, contain the spread of misinformation. Well, you may ask, what does this have to do with the virus? Well, China is also a censored socialist state and we are not making any accusations. The fact that the doctor who tried to blow the whistle on the virus outbreak was silenced proves this point exactly. They were simply containing the spread of misinformation in their minds. This is why we must filter and double check almost everything we hear in the news. We don't know anything and the more we learn, the less it feels we know. And a tip to keep in mind, the moment the news are published, it is already a week old information. We are barely catching up with the actual situation. Let's take a look at the mortality rate, for example. The official statement, around 2-3% to out of all cases are fatal. But let's fix that number. The doctor I mentioned, may he rest in peace, died 39 days after his diagnosis. How many of the infected are 39 days into their disease? That is impossible to know and so is the mortality rate, but we can say for certain it is not 3%. You see, mortality rate is not a running calculation. It must be calculated over a finite population. For example, you must identify a thousand people who have the disease. You must then wait for the outcome of those patients to be known, this obviously takes more time, then if 30 of them die and 970 of them go on to a complete recovery and only after they have completely recovered, the mortality rate can be stated as 3%. There is simply no other meaningful way to calculate the mortality rate. The outcome for the patient must be known. Anything else is just an estimate. And the data we do know at the moment, according to John Hopkins University, paints a totally different picture. We have 17,096 studied cases at the time of filming. Out of them, 15,084 have recovered and 2,012 have died. In other words, 12% fatality rate, not 3%. Oh, and by the way, while all the attention is on the COVID-19 at the moment, another disease has creeped up in the same area. A deadly bird flu with a much, much higher mortality rate of 60% among humans. But nobody talks about this. There are about 300 million chickens in the Yuhan area alone. So this is a different concern on its own but we felt the need to mention it. Okay, but why China and why is it so dangerous? Well, the most obvious danger is the sheer amount of people, 1,440,000,000. This is about 18% of all the people on the planet. That is one fifth of our planet in the highest risk area. One fifth of our producers, consumers, buyers and sellers. Obviously, it is not so bad at the moment, or so we are told, but the area affected is in fact the worst possible place for a virus epidemic to happen a place where more than 100 cities have over a million people. Now just think about that for a second. 100 cities with over a million people. If we take a look at the basic reproduction number, basically the expected number of cases generated by one case for coronavirus, this seems to be between 1.4 and 3.9. If we round that up at the midpoint, we can say three. So one person infects three others. Take a look at how fast things get out of hand. Now, if that happens in a city of millions, or a hundred of them, things go bad quickly. 
and it is not so unimaginable that one-fifth of our planet will be sick. You also may think that one-fifth is not that much. In fact it is. Try to add one-fifth of lemon juice to your drink and see how it tastes. It's really not the same thing anymore. And the world for sure won't be the same anymore. As of today, we have 75,282 total confirmed cases. This again, highly debatable. Remember the disease is asymptomatic, meaning you can get infected by a person in the incubation period. A person who doesn't have symptoms, doesn't know he's sick, doesn't know he's transmitting the disease. The real number of unconfirmed cases could in fact be in the hundreds of thousands. And remember that China is providing the data, so we have to take everything with a grain of salt, especially considering this next headline. Combine this with the limited number of test kits being used to confirm the disease, it is clear that it's impossible to diagnose all of the sick, and there is evidence that the official numbers of deaths aren't released by the government. More severe patients have not been tested by reagents to confirm the diagnosis and the hospital is reluctant to issue a death certificate. Both mainland and Hong Kong media have previously reported that death certificate of patients with the COVID-19 did not indicate that the cause of death was the virus or suspected virus, but other reasons, such as severe pneumonia and respiratory failure. So back to my main point. As of now, 75,000 cases, that means 75,000 hospital beds, or even crazier, 20 football fields covered in hospital beds. And that's just the ones we know. This is the people tested and confirmed. What about the people who haven't yet developed symptoms or are choosing not to go to a hospital? Now imagine that's 20 football fields that we know of people who need food, water, medicine, toilets, assistants, doctors, the list goes on and on. The affected areas are suffering from infected medical personnel overstretched healthcare system, extreme shortage of protective gear and shortages of food and services. The quarantine has essentially complicated all logistics of basic human needs. Can you imagine that there have been shops caught literally picking used face masks off the street, cleaning them and reselling them? A truly sad way to make a profit. A major global risk we face now is the virus spreading to lower income countries. Countries with a low GDP, substandard sanitary systems, and poor health services, and so on. In short, the so-called third world countries. If the virus is transmitted to such area, the virus may take over in such country faster than anyone can react, and the country simply does not have the capacity to control the spread or build the hospitals in 10 days like China did. So it is smart to keep an eye on the map and pay attention to the poorer countries at this moment. But how does the virus actually spread? Let's imagine that this is a sick person. When they cough or sneeze, the infection spreads by inhaling the air close to where the person sneezes or by touching the area where the microparticles land and then touching our mouth, nose or eyes. To avoid all this, the government has urged residents to avoid gatherings, open windows to help with the ventilation and practice good personal hygiene. And regularly disinfect their homes, especially areas like door handles, dinner tables and toilet seats. Of course, masks will help keep fluids from outside on the outside and the wearer's personal fluids to himself. But do you know how to actually use a mask? You see, most people don't, as you can see in the photos, and thus, they are not actually protecting themselves. Let's do it the correct way. Okay, first things first, we want clean hands. I'm wearing gloves, but if I wasn't, I'd be using the rubbing alcohol or washing my hands with soap. Next up, we take a box of fresh face masks. So, without touching the mask, we try to take it out. As you can see, the face mask has two sides, a colored side and the white side. The colored side should always be on the outside. Next up, if we look at the long side of the face mask, it has two sides again. One is a harder side, the other a softer side. The harder side is on the top and it has a small bit of metal or plastic in it designed to mold around our nose so that no fluids can escape. Now, how do we actually put it on? It's pretty straightforward, but most people still get it wrong. Not most people, some people. But still, let's see, let's see how we do it the correct way. So we basically take the face mask without touching it too much. We take it and we wrap it around our ears. We make sure to cover our chin. And the most important part, we mold it around our nose so that no fluids can escape and no fluids can get inside. This is the way to do it properly. So for now, these things I mentioned are our best bet to take care of ourselves. But why is China so important to the global economy? Well, how about the one-fifth of the world's population I mentioned to start with? But on a deeper level, China's economic rally over the past 40 years has resulted in it becoming the world's second biggest economy, with a GDP only behind the USA's. The well-known practice of outsourcing components and parts from Chinese companies 
has encouraged thousands of foreign businesses to open their own factories on the mainland. This in turn has worked wonders for the Chinese economy. Today China can be considered the world's factory, with more than 100 million workers in the manufacturing industry. The number is so ridiculous and ahead of everyone else, it is almost as if all of the population of Mexico, from young to old, worked in manufacturing. Crazy, but that's not the end of it. IT, construction, e-commerce, software, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the hundreds of billion dollar revenue industries in China. China is also a key player in the global supply chain. A big percentage of the world's raw materials traveled to China before being manufactured into a finished product. And the battle with the US over the import tariffs on billions of dollars of worth of goods illustrated the power of the Chinese economy to shake up the global outlook. So without covering more ground, we can establish that China is no joke. What happens there happens with the world, and it is clear that the economic ripple effect caused by the virus could be long-lasting. But let's unpack this, what is going on at the moment and what industries are suffering the most. Wuhan, a city of about 11 million people and the center of the outbreak, is a large industrial hub, an important player in the automotive industry and magnet for foreign investors, and not only a heavy industrial center, but also one of the largest education and scientific bases in China, so a place where a lot of things are going on. Most industries in China halted over the two weeks around the Lunar New Year. The majority of factories still remain shut, and as a consequence, tens of millions of people remain locked down and stranded in dozens of cities across the country. Even if the rate of infection has been bearish over the past few days, there is no certain sign of the workforce returning anytime soon. And uncertainty is really bad for countries and companies. And the stock or currency value tied to uncertainty will fall. The bigger the uncertainty, the bigger the decline. The ones that are closely tied with the Chinese economy are suffering from uncertainty caused by the epidemic. If you are looking to open sell positions, look for sectors that are facing the most uncertainty and do the same for the currency pairs. The travel and tourism sectors were hit particularly hard. What would normally be an increase in air traffic and tourism throughout Asia in line with the Chinese New Year holiday period instead resulted in a 55% drop in passenger numbers compared to the same period in 2019. Less passengers means less flights, means more layoffs, means planes waiting in a standstill. A billion dollar airline simply cannot afford sitting and waiting. Planes need to be constantly moving. Anything else results in lost profits. What is more interesting, Chinese tourists are literally money bags. They spend more than any other nation abroad. Approximately 250 billion US dollars. By the way, more than the annual economic output of Qatar. So if we look at it from a trading standpoint, we should be looking to sell Asian airline companies like Hong Kong's Cathay Pacific Airways. They have already given a statement that the first half of 2020 will be extremely challenging financially. For water transport, the same thing. Both air and seaports are far quieter than usual. Shipping companies are reporting a sharp drop in container volumes. The Baltic Dry Index, which tracks shipping costs for the largest carriers of commodities, such as iron ore, coal and grain, fell to the lowest level since 2016, with the capsized segment hitting all-time lows since 1999. This indicates that shipping companies are running at losses, just like airlines. You should again be looking for sharp drops in marine stocks. Costco, for example, the China's largest shipping company, and Baltic Dry Index is a good place to start. What about tech companies? What about Apple? What about the 290 Apple suppliers that are based in China? With many of the workers quarantined, Apple is the first major US company to state that the epidemic will actually hurt their finances, and in turn, they retracted their revenue forecast for the first quarter. What does this mean for traders like you and me? The most obvious would be to follow and go short on the Apple stock, but listen up, there is something more that brings more attention. TSMC is a company that sits at the heart of the global technology supply chain. TSMC is the world's largest semiconductor producer, with clients like AMD, Apple, Nvidia, Qualcomm and Huawei. Obviously, clients of this magnitude rely on production speeds and fulfilled quotas. As things go downhill at a faster rate than anyone expected, all these companies will suffer from strong selling pressure, including the biggest link, TSMC. A few months back, a small dent in production caused by a computer virus hurt TSMC's gross profits by around 5%. Now it is an actual virus that is endangering the tech supply chain, and the results could potentially be catastrophic. But there are industries that are actually benefiting. Companies that are trying to find the antidote for the virus are bullish and are expected to gain their stock value. Examples are a biotechnology company called Gilead Sciences that has struck a partnership 
and are testing out an antiviral drug on actual patients in Wuhan, China, to see if a drug that was originally developed to cure Ebola can treat symptoms of COVID-19. There are a number of other biopharmaceutical companies reaching into this opening. Johnson & Johnson, Inovia Pharmaceuticals, Moderna Therapeutics, and a coalition of public institutes led by researchers from Baylor's College of Medicine. As traders, this is the one area we should follow specifically, as shares of a company who develops a vaccine for the virus may skyrocket. Okay, we've covered what seems like a lot of ground, but please understand that we have only scratched the surface in this video. There are just so many variables and factors to consider and investigate, and the data is changing as you are watching this video. What I just said might already be irrelevant by the time you watch this. And with that said, all the links for the latest data will be in the description. Now, one last thing I want to mention, guys. Don't be mistaken. Coronavirus has nothing to do with this awesome product from Mexico. We heard there was some misunderstanding about it and we wanted to clear it up. Go ahead and look up the Modelo Group stock. They own Corona and it seems they're doing pretty good now. All of our viewers, thank you for watching. Please stay strong and stay safe. Finance Illustrated, we are out.